Let's see how you do under pressure, oh Yeah, I've been wanted this shit forever I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better Okay, hey. yeah. Ain't no errors, baby, it's a new era I wake up early, feeling rich like I'm Kesha I get to the paper, boy Extra, extra What's happening guys, this is Lucy Polgar from Fight Division here with Mia Trevor. Thank you so much for chatting to us. I know you've got a fighter on tonight, so I'll not take too much of your time. Just talk to us a little bit about what you're doing here today. Okay, so I am here tonight with Four Corners. Um, we've had Danny Batfight and Becky Caslin, who is fighting in about an hour against Daniela Miranda for the ISK World Title. What a fight that is going to be. So Daniela has obviously got a very a very cheeky, chappy kind of style. We've said this, like she likes to smile, she likes to have fun in there. Becky's here to make a statement, like Becky's here to, to prove to people that she belongs with these with these top fighters. Um, how do you think the two of them are going to go together? It's the quite unusual styles. Yeah, so it's a real contrast in styles. Yes. Um, I think Daniela is a great character, a great fighter. Um, but I've been training with Becky and she is among some of the best in the world. She's incredible. So her mindset's strong, her technique is strong. I've, I've never been hit any hit as hard. Wow, that's a big Yeah, yeah, she is absolutely incredible. So it's going to be a firework fight. If, if Becky can bring the fight the way that we all know that she can, then... It's going to be a firework fight. Do you know what? That's a big statement as well to say like you've not been hit that hard because you've been you've been in Thailand as well. So let's talk. Obviously, um, we'll get back to Becky because 100% that is going to be one of the fights of the night. But let's talk about you a little bit. Um, so you went to Thailand for uh, like was it eight months? Eight you months. did. Eight months. That's so sick. And you was like doing you were swimming teaching out of there, but then you was also training and fighting. Yeah. Just for anyone who's not like followed the story, just let us know like how that came about because I only recently found out that was uh, Amber gave you gloves during COVID. Yeah. And so say I know a little bit of the story, but for those at home we were listening just tell us a little bit about the last like two three years of your journey so it's it's been a mental last couple of years yeah. as much as two and a half three years ago I'd never even picked up a pair of boxing gloves that is insane considering like where you're at now that's that's amazing yeah it's happened really quickly yeah. so basically what happened is so I've known Amber my whole life but like distantly off our parents were friends um, and then COVID my head fell off as did loads of people but anyway it kind of got back to Amber that like I needed a bit of a pick me up and that was where the glove story came from and she just she left a pair of gloves at my door like an old reconnected friend and was just like right come on let's go and then yeah long story short I had my first year of fighting that was really successful I had seven fights in my first year um, then I went out to Super Pro with Amber um, and when that when I was out there they were building a big swimming pool so I basically just said hey look this is actually what I do when I'm in England so if you want a swimming coach please consider me and they did and next thing you know I was on a plane on my own with about a tenner on my way to Thailand and that was it I was there for eight months you know what? I listen to stories like this and I just think I feel like I'm in a film when I hear somebody like talk that like yeah I had this old friend we reconnected I happened to go on this holiday and then we have it and like sometimes the way things align though it's like this is this is and now obviously you're in it like this is what you're meant to do there's something aligned there where it was like it was always destined to come to this yeah and that's exactly how I feel and I've, I've actually said this recently in that so many things have accidentally fallen into place that have got me here which makes me think this is where I'm, I'm meant to be of course I just had my, my last fight back in the UK that I did lose but because Hitman Fight League but because I've been on such a journey of things falling into place I'm in such a strong mental place at the moment of just believing that everything that I'm going through and have been through, good and bad leading up to this point, is, is genuinely meant to be. So I've taken the loss on the chin. It shouldn't have happened. I shouldn't have let that happen. But it did. And that it was meant to happen. So I have a feeling that there is something very big happening in the future that that was a puzzle piece that it was a part of. I absolutely. Do you know what? I am well into all this sort of stuff as well. Like Even away from the Thai stuff, I think that's why I love the Thai game so much because you do find a lot more people who are sort of like a little bit more spiritually connected. And I definitely feel like I, I'm the same. Like when, you, when something, even if it doesn't go your way, once you've been through a couple of things like that and you can look back on hindsight and be like, but it all worked out. Even when my head fell off in COVID or even when, you know, I went with a tenor in my bag and I had nothing on me and you look back at those moments and think oh actually here I am four years later and all that happened exactly how it should once you've been through that it gives you the trust in to be like okay something's gone wrong now but I know I'm going to look back in a couple of years so that's, is that how you feel you look back in a couple of years and this was all meant to line up oh absolutely I'll look back and think that it was all meant to happen so the thing being is that I I look back at when I like okay when she dropped those gloves off and I look back at 20 year old year old me and I don't even recognise her and I don't know if that's because of the sport or the life that I now lead because of this sport but so much has changed and I have changed so much because of my introduction to this that I just I know that it's meant to be I mean even if I don't have a future in this sport 
which I believe that I do, but I still I still think it's a building block to, to what I'm meant to do. So it will lead me to where I'm supposed to be. Because like I didn't I didn't go to university because I was scared to leave home. And here I am, I've just got back from Thailand, and I literally could not have been in a worse position when I went in terms of like financially stability. And I just thought, sorry, fuck it, I'm going. And two years ago, I, I couldn't even go two, like, two hours away from my hometown because I was terrified to do so. So I look back to that mirror and I think, yeah, like this is this was what was meant to happen, and it's gonna keep it's gonna keep growing regardless of how that happens. I'm just gonna I'm gonna follow the path that's been set out for me. Keep fighting, keep winning, keep losing, learning like I'm doing, and just yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what I love as well is that what, you you saying this and living by it gives other people the freedom to do it because there's plenty of people even like not so much now but myself included years ago I would listen to a story like yours and be like. It just, that little spark, it'd be like, oh, I want to do something like that. And other people will hear your story and be like, do you know what? She did it and now it's all lining up and da, da, da. And, and it gives people that little fuel to like, well, maybe I can because you have. So I just love that you're doing it and you're talking about it because, Miles, sorry, sorry guys, Miles, uh, photo me. Uh, because like I say, it does give other people permission to sort of do it themselves. Another thing I love, one of your interviews recently, I, I've reposted it. Oh my God, saying that women are just as badass as men. Absolutely. Yes, that needs to be the tagline for this interview. Women, women are, are just are badass. Yes, I love it. And you, were, and you sat there with your wraps and then you're doing the pads and you look so cool. And I was like, that is what we need. More women who are just absolutely owning it. It were really cool, like just easy to chat to. I just think you're a great example for the sport. Um, how, how have you become sort of like that version of yourself? Does that make sense to, to throw that out to people? That's a really hard question. I think by breaking my own boundaries. So the first thing was was finding something I was scared of and doing it. And then finding the next thing that I was scared of and doing that. And then that moment before you fight, I found to be the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my life. Like you're about to walk out as a trained individual to fight another trained individual in front of all your friends and family. Like that's mental. And I have never felt a fear that was so real. And the fact that I felt that real, that fear, to the point where my legs wouldn't work, I couldn't breathe and I walked out and I did it anyway. All of a sudden, fear wasn't something that ruled me anymore. Be being afraid wasn't. Fear is only powerful if you let it stop you. And I've never felt a fear that was that real and I thought, and I did it anyway. Therefore, there is nothing that I don't think can be conquered. And then it just, it goes from there. You think, okay, I'm scared of flying. Get on a plane, go on a plane. Only thing I haven't mastered yet, guys, though, um, I'm terrified of spiders. And that's gonna stay as it is. That'll, I'll keep that one. Everything else, guys, find something that you're afraid of and do it. Because if it doesn't work, so what? You've tried it. And if it works, you've broken out of your own chains. So just do what you're afraid to do. Because why not? I love this. This is like the best clip of all my interview. I'm like, just, do you know what? Because it's actionable advice. Sometimes I ask, I, I always, I'm fascinated with mindset, mate. Absolutely fascinated. So I always ask mindset questions. And sometimes you can get like, a little generic answer of like, yeah, well, you just have to believe or whatever, but you're like, no, no, here's the actual point. Find a boundary, break it, push past your fears. I like that you've got actionable advice, that's great. Um, so let's go back to Becky. Obviously, you've been training with Becky, you know what she's capable of. How do you see the fight with Daniela going? Because Daniela is, again, a very, very great opponent, likes to have a bit of fun with it. Do you think it's going to be quick? Do you think it's going to go the distance? So again, just to reiterate, I think Daniela's great. Amazing fighter. And that's the thing, the women in this sport, we're all so communal, and we are. So I'm not here to badmouth anybody or shoot anyone down, because these both of these women are fantastic. But Becky's my girl. Like, I have seen her in action. So I, I see this fight going. Daniela's strong. She's going to come forward. We think she's going to have strong, fast hands. She's also quite unpredictable. So maybe feel it out that first round. Becky's Becky's tall, yeah. like using her range. So that first round, maybe a feel out. As soon as Becky finds her range, finds her power, that girl, she fights at 53 kilo, but like she she'll hit you like at 80 kilo. Like I, she has got some insane power. So as soon as she finds her feet and she lets her hands go, lets her kicks go, I don't see it go in the distance. I genuinely don't. I don't. 
because like she's she's incredible and also her fight IQ is unlike anyone I've ever sparred with like yeah yeah you think you, you'll think you're being clever yourself and you're like ha, yeah that's smart and she already knows and you're like okay, how, how so she's intelligent she's strong she's also fit like really fit yeah so yeah, she's got the tank, but both girls have got the tank. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, so while, yeah. while it's going on, fireworks, great fight. But I don't see it going the distance. I don't see it going the distance. I absolutely love that. Um, listen, thank you so much for chatting to us. I do know you need to go and warm Becky up. Let me just talk to you a little tiny bit now about what's coming for you. So in, we are expecting to see you again on Hitman Fight League in February. Talk to us about that. So I've got little to say about it other than that I'm very excited to be on it. I don't know who I'm against, <laughs> but I have no idea. So I know that we're out there as a team. So we've got Becky that's matched on it already. Ian Gibson is part of the uh, four-man tournament, Road to One. Oh, yes, yes. Big up four corners. Um, and then Jamie Williams is on it as well. And then hopefully myself. Yes. So I have no idea who. However, I got on that platform last time, which was a great opportunity. And I did not put on the performance that I wanted to put on by any means. I think I had pre-decided how I saw that fight going and was potentially a little bit arrogant about it. I got in the ring and it didn't go to plan and I lost my head and it just was not what I was capable of doing. Um, I, I, mean, love, I love that you see that though yeah. and like, this, like you say, this is all those stepping stones and the lesson for February now to maybe hopefully come back with a bang. So like I was in Thailand and I won four of my fights knockout and I got back and was like, yeah. yeah and actually, you know what, yeah. like she bought it, good on her. It was a fantastic fight, it was exciting. She pushed my cardio and it, regardless, it was not the fight that I needed it to be. It wasn't the performance that I could have put on. So whoever you put me in front of on February 24th, I'm going to bring the best performance I possibly can and I'm going to write that wrong. Yes, absolutely love that. Listen, Mia, an absolute pleasure to chat to you. I'll let you go and warm back up and hopefully we'll catch you through an interview after as well. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's see how you do under pressure. Oh. Yeah, I've been wanting this forever. I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me. Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better. Okay. Hey. Ain't no errors, baby, it's a new era I wake up early feeling rich like I'm Kesha I get to the paper, boy Extra, extra